Should have wrote it down. You know? <laughs> that, no, that ain't right though. You gotta have it. <laughs> anyway, um, Spike Lee's homage to the city game, right? Uh, uh, the, the basketball of our urban streets. Um, not my favorite of Spike's movies, but uh, uh, a passable entry. Uh, and of course, uh, Spike is always engaged with the music, and I'm very glad that he got Public Enemy to uh, to do the soundtrack for that film. Um, uh, Denzel Washington, you were one of Spike and Denzel collaborations. Also uh, was playing India Ari, the lovely India Ari, um, and uh, and again particularly her her, in my imagination, response to Don Imus, uh, those hoes, those nappy-headed hoes of the Rutgers University Rutgers University basketball team. Isn't it interesting? The Rutgers basketball is back in the, the discussion of uh, of race in American sport. Um, uh, they they can't seem to avoid the, uh, the subject. Um, but uh, in the re, I am not my hair, right? I am not your expectation. Uh, I think in no way a uh, diminishment of the beauty of, uh, of African uh, uh, women's hair, um, but rather a declaration of her own beauty and her own uh, will to define her beauty. And also the tune uh, that she was singing there that I love so much, trying to get down to the heart of the matter, um, that wonderful cover of the old Don Henley song, but she does it better. I, I, you know, I love her version of it. But my will gets weak and my thoughts start to scatter, right? It's, it's hard to hold the line of your own humanity. Uh, so I love, uh, uh, I thought these were all very appropriate musical uh, backdrops for uh, introducing our talk today. Um, the other, uh, another, I think, appropriate backdrop, of course, is this very famous photograph right here. And uh, uh, this is the, uh, the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico City. I'm quite sure that most of you have probably seen this photograph at one time or another. Um, in your lives. This is Tommy Smith. Uh, this is, he's the, the gold medal winner. This is after the 200 meter dash. Um, this is John Carlos. And uh, there's a funny story. I used to think, I always ask why he always had his left hand in here. What was that all about? They are, of course, um, uh, using, employing the, the famous Black Power salute in the 1960s. And uh, 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 what I got from just asking around is that he was so nervous that uh, he put the glove on the wrong hand and, and threw up his left hand. So I kept looking real close to try to see if it was a left-handed glove or a right-handed glove here. Couldn't quite tell, but uh, then I, uh, over time, I actually got the real story, which was partly true. The other story was partly true. Um, he forgot to bring his gloves to the to the stadium that day, and uh, and so he he and it's very interesting. This man here, whose name is Peter Norman, he's an Australian, uh, and uh, he suggested. To the to his his uh, colleagues here that uh, that why don't you just use Tommy Smith's other glove and so uh, he put the glove on the left hand and that's that's why that's that is as it is. Um, it's also very interesting that uh, that uh, uh, Norman, who he's a silver medalist in the race and he um, was he, he backed the the brothers 100 percent. He was right with them. Yeah, it's a, it was a kind of a rare example of a, a white male, a white athlete, putting himself on the line, uh, jeopardizing his own situation um, uh, on behalf of his black colleagues. Um, and uh, and uh, Peter Norman, he, he's an interesting fellow, you should, you should Google him up and, and look, look, check him out a little bit. When he, he died uh, six, seven years ago now, and, uh, and when he died, both uh, Tommy Smith and John Carlos flew all the way to Australia and were pallbearers at his funeral. Um, so it's a, a, a moment that these three men shared uh, that a moment that that just did and said so much um, uh, about this subject that we're talking about today, white supremacy and American sport. So I, I uh, throw that up there. I think Jerome, can we just, if you can just flip through a couple of the other images um, here. Uh, this is Lee Evans. Uh, um, uh, anybody remember the other two gentlemen's names? Um, uh, I can't remember. Um, uh, they were all three of these men were. Uh, uh, essentially banned from, uh, they, they, they qualified for the 1972 Munich Games and couldn't compete really as a result of this. Um, that was four years later. Uh, go ahead, Jerome. Just, just to give you all a sense of some of the, the spirit of that time and to get us into the right mood here. Go ahead to the next one as well. Um, uh, I, I always wonder what this must have been like for these people. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they didn't know what, you know, if they were going to get shot or something. <laughs> uh, uh, but it's a uh, 
full images. Is that the last one or do we have one more? Yeah, yeah that, that's it. Uh, look at that smile. You know, they, I mean, he is, he is bold in his assertion of his humanity. Um, uh, and I think that's the final one, right? Uh, ah, this is the, the last. Yeah, I was hoping actually here. Unfortunately, these guys are in the way. Um, but uh, the, the two, uh, Carlos and Smith's feet, <coughs> They went out unshot. They didn't have their shoes. <coughs> and the reason they did, they did that as a symbolic homage to the poor people of America, the poor black people of America. Mm -hmm. And that's why they did that. Uh, yeah, these, these, there's many, these, this moment is rife with uh, symbolic imagery. So, um, all right, back to the first one. We can, uh, we can leave that one up there. Just a couple other thank yous that I, I must, um, thanks, girl. Uh, a couple other thank yous that I have to uh, uh, say publicly. One is, um, this is the, the flyer for this event. And uh, uh, by the way, a couple of things. Somebody was taking down our flyers for this event. They went down and ripped down all of our flyers. Uh, and I, I just want to say that if any of you have any idea about any of that, please let me know. Uh, I'd really like to deal with that. I just went down and talked to, to Brother Sergeant Henry down at the public safety desk. Um, let him know about it. But uh, this happens on occasion with our events, and, uh, and I'd really like to make sure that we're doing everything we can to, to identify the problem and, uh, and deal with it. So um, if any of you are aware of any of that, please do uh, let me know. Uh, and then uh, 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 you should also know if any of you did see the, uh, the advertisement for this event on the web page or in the email blast, for some reason they changed our title. And uh, yeah, I, I was not too pleased with that. Uh, the uh, the title that was on the, the web was racism and sports. The actual title of this panel is forty million dollar slaves, white supremacy and American sport. All right, it, it says something quite different than racism and sports. So I I, uh, uh, I I want everybody to know that this is the title <laughs> of this panel. And uh, and and uh, the image that we used here, obviously taken from the image of Tommy Smith. Um, on the stand there, uh, the image that we used here is, uh, is an image by an artist named Ronald Wimberly, uh, a local African-American artist uh, based in New York here. Mostly comic book kind of stuff, but uh, a really beautiful rendering of this moment. Um, and, uh, and I uh, had to issue an apology to Mr. Wimberly because when we created this, uh, when we designed this flyer, we thought that the image was in the public domain. It was not. And a friend of Mr. Wimberly's uh, got in touch with us, and and, uh, and and I was able to contact him and get his permission to use it. Turns out he was a very very nice guy, and uh, and his email to me, it, it, he said, you know, I I thank you so much for reaching out because you know when people take my stuff, it's just like they're stealing from me, and um, and then he said, you know, I did that image. It was a contract job that I did so I could eat, you know, and I I just melted when I said that. I said, you know, hey, I. I gotta say something about your work, you know. So I, I his his e, his website is here on the flyer, you know, uh, at d d pi dot com, and I encourage you to go check out his work. Um, and I told him that his uh, his image for our flyer was made me think of the the freedom to dream, the freedom to dream. And uh, he wrote back. He said, I like that. <laughs> so um, so uh, much gratitude to him. And then finally, uh, a uh, thank you to William Roden. Uh, himself, the author of uh, a couple of books now, and including the book for which we um, uh, uh, used his we used his title for our panel title, Forty Million Dollar Slaves: The Rise and the Rise, Fall, and Redemption of the Black Athlete. The Rise, Fall, and Redemption of the Black Athlete. And uh, and Mr. Roden sent me. I, I wrote to him. He's a New York Times uh, sports columnist. I wrote to him at the Times, and he uh, sent this little nice little note back. I thought I'd read it to you. Uh, he says, uh, you know, please, please, I encourage you to use the title. Um, uh, uh, good luck with your panel. The panel sounds intriguing, and the topic, for better or worse, is timeless. The topic, for better or worse, is timeless. Um, I almost hope that it's not timeless, you know, <laughs> that uh, one day long after we're all dead, that this will be put to rest. Uh, this, this, even Rome didn't last forever. So uh, I, I think, but, but certainly, uh, we know nothing but a world where white supremacy is present, right? And certainly in the world of sports, uh, the world of sports is no exception. So that's what we're talking about today. Um, my, my final and most important possibly thank you is to our panelists. Uh, they have come from many walks, and I'd like to take just a moment to, to introduce them. I, 
I was the, the best I could do was just offer them a copy of, of Brother Roden's book, uh, so uh, and some orange juice. <laughs> so, in other words, they are here uh, of their own free will and uh, goodwill and, and good spirit. Uh, so um, we're just very grateful for all of you uh, uh, for being here. I'll introduce uh, the panel in the in the order that we'll be speaking. Um, we'll each speak for about eight to ten minutes, including myself. I'll I'll run the anchor leg and close it out, and. Um, uh, and then we'll have ample time for any any discussion, any uh, comment, any question that you all would like to add would be fantastic. Um, Dr. Michelle Renee Gregory has been at York College for eight years and is an associate professor and coordinator of the sociology program, as well as the interim coordinator of the Black Studies program. Thank you. <laughs> That's my, for that. <laughs> it's always a struggle in Black Studies. Uh, I'm so grateful to have you. Um, her areas of research interests include, now get this list, all right? Sports, <coughs> the body, masculinities, management, work, gender, sexuality, race and ethnicity, global economic inequality, corporate malfeasance, and health disparities. <laughs> Dr. Gregory's current projects involve the study of competitive sports, ideal bodies, gender, immigration status, and immigration status and race, and how they are used to construct workplace opportunities in the U.S. and the U.K. In addition, Dr. Gregory is in the early stages of a project examining the intersection between social policies and the global subprime housing crisis. <laughs> That's, we need to read that work when it comes. Uh, Dr. Gregory has published her work in a number of very prestigious journals and anthologies in the U.S. and in, in the U.K. I, I really encourage you to check her work out. Uh, uh, and just, you know, just, just the titles of her essays are uh, intriguing. Um, Dr. Gregory holds a Ph.D. in sociology from the University of London and a, Lon and a uh, master's degree in industrial relations and personal management from the London School of Economics. She was a three-sport athlete in high school, field hockey, basketball, and track and field. She drew the javelin. Uh, Public Enemy has a javelin, uh, verbal javelins, I think, uh, uh, Flame of Flame says, about tossing verbal javelins. <laughs> um, uh, she walked onto the basketball team at LSU, in the Southeastern Conference, and played her way into a scholarship at Northeast Louisiana University, uh, basketball, uh, played her way into a scholarship at Northeast Louisiana University. Warhawks? Is that the, uh, yeah, the Warhawks. <laughs> we got ears. Um, but check this out. One of her teams made it all the way to the Sweet 16 and uh, in the NCAA tournament where they lost to none other than Cheryl Miller's USC Trojans. Uh, I don't know if any of you know this history, but that yeah. is quite possibly the uh, greatest women's basketball team ever yeah. assembled. Um, uh, Paula and Pamela, Mc the McGee twins playing up front with uh, uh, Rhonda Wentham and Cynthia Cooper uh, mm -hmm. in the backcourt. Uh, and uh, uh, she, she was... Sister Gregory was there. So. My, where was that game? Do you remember? I might add on the bench. Do you remember where that game was? It was actually in, in uh, Los Angeles, actually. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So they had home court advantage. US. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why they won. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> what an experience. Yeah. I'd love to hear more about that at any time. Um, thank you, Dr. Gregory. I just have to say, it's just so wonderful to have uh, Dr. Gregory as a colleague, uh, a, 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 just a quietly powerful and kind presence here on the faculty, and I'm just grateful for her, for her presence. Um, Satish Ram is a 19-year-old student at York College, where he majors in sociology while completing prerequisites for the Physician's Assistance Program. He was a high school pitcher, and he's covered multiple sports over the last few years as a writer, including basketball, football, and skateboarding. But the sport he has most experience in is baseball. He's a senior editor and writer at MetsmerizedOnline.com, one of the most respected Mets blogs on the internet. Satish expertly articulates his strong opinions, and, has, and as he is armed with so many verbal daggers, and he is armed with so many verbal daggers, that it is a smart decision not to underestimate him based on his age. <laughs> and I can speak to that because this young brother was in my freshman composition class some number of semesters ago, and, and he's good. He can write, and he can argue. And, uh, and I also uh, want to affirm you for being here because one of the things we're trying to do up here at the, at the African American Resource Center is to 
ask a student to be on all of our professional panels. Uh, uh, we really are hoping that we can make that a regular.